a, a, a big part of the practice of meditation is relaxing the body and most people have no idea how much tension they have. So to, to, to be, when you become more aware of the body, one of the things you become aware of is, is the tension that's been there all along that you weren't aware of. Usually in, in the upper body, people hold tremendous amount of tension in their face, in their eyes, in their neck, in their shoulders, because most human beings are living up here. Most human beings are living in their head. They're living in the thought process. And, and so all the uh, energy is, is concentrated up here. And most people feel like they're, most people consider themselves to be the doer. And as soon as you consider yourself to be the doer, there's a tremendous responsibility involved, right? Because then you have to worry about what you do and what you don't do, right? And the, and the consequences of that and, and the, um, the experience of carrying the weight of responsibility of your life. Right? And so that's one of the reasons why people's shoulders are always up, because on a less than conscious level, you're carrying something all the time. You know, you're carrying, you're carrying the weight of your life on your shoulders, you know, and you're using this energy, this concentrated, contracted energy up here all the time, you know, to try and function in the world, to try and understand, to try and figure it out, you know, to try and come up with the right moves, you know, and so forth. So to relax the body is a big, big uh, part of this. But when you are practicing focusing attention on the, on the body breathing, the awareness of the body is all that's necessary for the body to continue to relax. That's why when we talk about relaxing the body, um, the only thing that is said about it is to pay attention to the body and notice where the tension is. That's all you have to do. If you try and relax, that's tension, you know, uh, so that try, trying to do anything is not doing, you know, when you try to do something, you're not doing it, you're trying to do it, right? It's efforting, it's making an effort, right? So with relaxation, it, that doesn't work. With relaxation, it's just a matter of being conscious, being aware of the body. And when you're aware of the body, there's a natural tendency on the part of the body to let go. So one of the things to be to 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 notice uh, about your practice of meditation is that if you're finding when you're practicing meditation that there's a lot of restlessness or a lot of tension or uh, it, it it seems like there is um, trying happening, you know, efforting happening. I'm trying to meditate. I see this a lot with people. They're trying to meditate. There's efforting happening. And the thing about it is if you pay attention to the experience you're having in meditation, if there's tension there, and if the practice of meditation involves this, this kind of trying thing, this kind of contraction, you want to be clear that if that's happening, if you're experiencing a lot of restlessness and a lot of tension and a lot of efforting when you're attempting to meditate, right, you're resisting. Whenever that's happening, there's resistance. Whenever you're experiencing tension or conflict, right, um, there's resistance happening. So when you're practicing meditation, part of the practice is letting go, not resisting, right? Meaning that, meaning that practicing being the awareness that you are, it, the a nature of that awareness is that it is unmoved by by anything that's happening the 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 space in this room is unmoved by our presence yes yeah, it's unmoved by our presence right so the same thing is true in meditation the awareness is stillness it's emptiness it's the void it's silent right the, these are the this is the kind of the way it is you know when you're experiencing the awareness that you are and there's no resistance to anything in this awareness it's one of the reasons why to have the class in this room next to a spin class, I like it. I like it because uh, there gives you something to, to resist, right? You, you have your own thought process to resist, but now you have the added attraction of this sound coming from the wall to, to resist as well. So it gives you something to work with, you see. So when you're practicing meditation, if you hear the sound, just like if you notice thinking, right? 
you, you, you're not at odds with it. You know, you, you don't try and stop listening to it. You don't, you know, you don't go into a thought process of, oh, I can't meditate because of that noise, right? No. You simply allow it to exist the way you allow everything to exist, the way you allow thoughts to exist, the way you allow physical sensations to exist, the way you allow emotions to exist. No resistance. It's, everything is a yes. Everything is okay. There's nothing wrong. Everything is acceptable. Now, that's obviously not the way uh, human beings are, right? That's not the way the, a thinking person is. No, a thinking person is figuring out more, sophistic, more sophisticated, sophisticated ways to resist, right? More, more sophisticated ways to be in conflict with reality, to be in conflict with what's going on, to be in conflict with yourself, to be in conflict with your body, to be in conflict with the past, to be in conflict with the future, to be in conflict with your thoughts, right? This resistance is the source, this saying no to life is the source of suffering. So in meditation, the idea is to practice being present and the experience of being present is, the, is an experience of no resistance. The experience of being present is an experience of no resistance. So that you're helping the brain stand down. You're helping the brain uh, and the mind to relax and calm down because you're, you're giving it real-time information and the real-time information you're giving it is nothing, nobody's chasing me right now. Nothing's threatening me right now, right? And so you're giving it corrective data, right? You're giving information to the brain and the mind. It's okay to relax. Nitsushimi Roshi, who was a, 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 Zen, um, a Zen master, he was the teacher of Brad Werner, for any of you who have ever seen Brad Werner's YouTube videos, right? When he talked about enlightenment, he talked about balance, and he talked about the, the way he talked about it is, is the, to, to balance the two energy systems, you know, the, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, right? To get them into balance is to bring the, the, uh, can, the experience of balance into play. And, when, and what that means is we're out of balance, right? We're out of balance because our amygdala and the brain is on constant alert. And we're in a constant tense state, right? We're in a constant low-grade fear state, right? So when you're practicing meditation, you're training the brain and you're training the body uh, to stop being in an, an overactive alert state. You're, you're training it to calm down and, and training it to get, cons to get related to reality, to get consistent with reality, meaning that there is no threat right now. Therefore, I don't have to have this tension in my body. Therefore, I don't have to have this low-grade fear or this concern going on all the time. Because if that is the case, then I'm paranoid. Do you understand? If that is the case, it means I'm paranoid. What's paranoia? Paranoia means that um, you think things are happening that are not happening that concern you. Isn't that paranoia? You're, you're, par when you're paranoid, you're, you're afraid of things that aren't real. That's paranoia, right? And so you overreact to things because you're paranoid, right? You're overly concerned. When you practice the way this is meant to be done in meditation, right? You're practicing being present, and you're practicing being alert, and you're practicing being relaxed, right? And we, and you, and we could say that that's the natural state. That's the natural state. So most people aren't in a natural state. They're in an unnatural state. They're in an unbalanced state. They're in an overreactive state. They're in, a, in, in an over-tense or contracted state, physically and emotionally. So you, So there's this process of, of practicing being relaxed and alert. There's this uh, process of practicing learning what it feels like to be the awareness instead of the person. You're learning what it likes, feels like to be the awareness instead of the person when you meditate. Because when you have awareness on the body breathing, that's not a person. When the thinking 
begins to happen, when the thinking activity is happening, right? As soon as the thinking activity happens, it produces a person. As soon as a thought occurs, it produces a person because it brings you back into the system in which you're a physical body and you're a person and the world occurs to you the way the world occurs to most people because that's your conditioning. Therefore, you're separate from everybody else, right? You're separate from the world, you know, like that. And all that happens in the snap of a finger. As soon as your attention goes to thinking, you're back being a body, being a person, sitting here meditating. In an instant, that happens, right? When you bring your attention back to the body breathing, now there's no thinking, right? If there is thinking, if you notice there's thinking, right, then you really haven't come out of the thought process, right? And, and for a lot of people to refine your practice of meditation means to pay attention in such a way where you notice that you were thinking and you were thinking you were paying attention and being aware of the body breathing, but you were thinking that. This is a fine point, right? So you want to really pay attention so you notice when that's not occurring, when there's just no thinking and all there is is awareness of the body breathing. I recommend that you focus attention on the belly area. One of the teachers that I was listening to uh, recommended focusing attention. It might have been Brad Werner. Focusing attention on the belly area versus the nostrils. And the reason they gave is because this area is closer to the craziness. <laughs> this area is closer to the craziness. This area is farther away from the craziness. And one of the things that we're doing when we practice meditation and when we practice Tai Chi Cha, if that's the practice that you're involved with, is we're bringing the energy down, right? So in the practice of Tai Chi or Tai Chi Cha, there's a lot of emphasis on bringing the energy down, getting grounded, right? Even using the hands, the idea of bringing the energy down. So when you're paying attention to, to the breath at the belly, it's helpful because this helps to, to bring the energy down from the head to the gut, right? Down to the belly, down to the center of energy, right? The hara or the uh, dantian, an inch below the navel, the, uh, the actual center, energetic center in the body, right? To bring your attention here. And to actually, part of bringing the attention here is having this be the place from which you're connecting to life instead of this. Instead of connecting to life this way, you're connecting to life from the belly. You're connecting to life from the belly. Even when you walk, you know, uh, people who practice Tai Chi and Tai Chi Cha, yeah, even when you walk, if you understand the practice, you begin to, to, to move from here. You begin to move from the belly, from the center, right? This helps you to be in balance. This helps you to stay grounded. This helps you to stay out of your head. So one of the Ways you can practice, for example, uh, being conscious or being aware uh, when you're walking, right, is to just practice in your everyday life when you're walking, because we're all walking all the time, right, from one place to an another. So when you're walking, to practice dropping your attention to the soles of the feet. Just keep dropping your attention to feeling your feet touching the ground when you walk instead of thinking, right? That's a valid practice of meditation. And you can do it, you know, you can do that anywhere. Even when you're driving the car, you can drop your attention to the Dantian. You can drop your attention uh, to the belly when you're driving your car, you know, to have your experience come from the center of energy instead of from the mind, the part of the practice. Example, yeah. People feel, fe tend to feel fear in their belly, right? People tend to feel fear in their belly, right? Uh, so I think there's, there's, there's validity to different areas in the body, you know, being areas that are related to specific emotions. You know, anger, for example, if you're angry, if you're angry and you're into fight, flight, right, uh, that it makes sense that you're going to feel a lot of tension up here because the blood's rushing to this area because if you're going to fight, the blood needs to be here and here. The blood needs to go to the thighs and the shoulders if you're going to fight or run, right? So it makes sense that those be areas would be affected when you're experiencing those particular emotions. See, if you look at if you under if you look at the practice from a certain perspective, from a certain point of view, anything that inhibits the practice or stifles the practice 
or, or gets in the way of the practice is a good thing because it gives you an opportunity to practice. Yeah, so uh, falling asleep is a common thing for people, not just because you're meditating after dinner, no. Falling asleep is one of the ways the mind protects the body uh, to go unconscious. That's what a coma is, right? To go unconscious is, is what, one of the ways the system protects itself is to go unconscious, right? So for a lot of people who have a lot of undealt with emotional material, because when you sit and meditate, you're relaxing, you're becoming receptive, you're opening yourself up, right? And so what's gonna happen is whatever you've been sitting on starts to surface and you start to experience memories of things, traumas, you know, different experiences, crying may come up, laughing might come up, you know, whatever is there unexperienced starts to surface and starts to come up, right? So uh, to, to look at what's happening from a certain point of view, because your, your emphasis is always looking at the practice, what's happening in the practice. And one of the things that teachers say about people who talk about falling asleep when they're practicing, right? is you want to take a look at your commitment. You want to take a look at your commitment. Uh, if, you're, if you're driving your car and it's late at night and you're tired, right? Uh, how are you going to deal with being tired and the possibility of falling asleep at the wheel? Yeah, you're going to do whatever you got to do because you don't want to die, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so you do whatever you got to do to stay awake, right? Because you don't want to die, right? So your commitment is to stay alive. Right? If your commitment is to meditate, right? And the commitment is as strong as your commitment is to stay alive when you're driving a car, you'll deal with it. You'll deal with it. So that's, so that's why the teachers say if you're falling asleep, look at your commitment. If your commitment is strong enough, or another way to talk about this is to, if you're falling asleep, work with that. Work with that. If you know you have a tendency to fall asleep, when you start noticing your, see, this is what this is what a, this is what paying attention is all about. If you know you have a tendency to fall asleep when you meditate, when you start noticing you're going in that direction, right, right, increase your your attention. Increase your attention. You know, don't let it happen. It's the same thing with anger. The same thing with a lot of things that happen to us that cause us uh, to go unconscious or cause us to behave poorly, right? It's the same thing. If you're practicing and you understand the practice, right, and you understand the importance of paying attention, one of the things that will happen is when you start to feel annoyed, right, when you start to feel annoyed and when you know it's starting to move towards being angry and you know it's starting to move towards being the kind of angry that you're going to, the anger is going to take over, right? Yeah, because you've been training yourself to pay attention, when you start seeing it go in that direction, right, then you, then you get vigilant, then you really pay attention closely. Why? Because you know when you're angry that you have a tendency to, to cause trouble. When you're angry, you have a tendency to, to talk stupid talk, right? Yeah, and so in, in the context of this work, in the context of meditation, the way we look at that is, oh, that's something to work with. That gives us something to work with. That's something that takes us out of being present, right? So we know that, right? We know that. So now when you're in an interaction with somebody, especially people that are close to you, right? And the interaction is about something that's wrong, some, something that's not working, right? And, they're, and, and, and the other person may be upset, right? And the other person may not be a meditator, right? May, may not ha know anything about any of this stuff, right? Yeah. So you're walking around in a world where most of the people you're interacting with have no, no awareness of any of the stuff we're talking about here, right? So you're the one that has to be responsible. You're the one that has to be, you're the awake party. Therefore, when you're dealing with people who are reactive and tend to get upset and become impulsive and get nasty and become threatening, right? That's where you practice the practice the most. Right, because you know the possibility and you know that if you are clear headed, if you can be present with this situation and with these people, right, that you can get access, right, to skillful means, 
right? Because instead of being angry, and this is what I was trying to say earlier, instead of just being angry, no, you're aware of their being anger. You're not, you aren't angry, right? An uninitiated person gets angry. They are angry, you see? An initiated person who has practice meditation, who has a, a, some a degree of being awake and present, right? They, they're not being angry. Anger occurs for them. Anger comes up. They're the awareness of the anger, not the anger. This is the key. This is the key to the whole thing of these teachings and practices. What's the difference between being aware of anger instead of being angry? What's the difference between being aware of anxiety instead of being anxious? What's the difference between being aware of an emotional experience instead of being the experience. It's a big difference to be aware of the experience instead of being the experience. Because if you're aware of the experience, right, you have the ability to stay present to what's happening and awareness of the emotion. You have the ability to stay present to what's happening and the awareness of the emotion. Without that ability, the anger distorts your perception. Without that ability, you're being angry, and the anger is a lens that you're now looking through. And without that ability, the thoughts that occur in your mind, you immediately identify with, and now you have an angry story about what you're angry about, right? And when you're in the world of that, when you're in the world of that, it can be complete in the sense that, you know, you, it doesn't seem, it seems very real and it doesn't seem like you have any choice about doing anything other than to fight or run. Yeah. So that's, so that becomes an, that becomes an area that we uh, are intentionally using to do the practice. Same thing with falling asleep. That becomes an area that we're intentionally using to do the practice, right? So instead of, see, it's the, it's the person that would say, oh, I can't meditate because I fall asleep when I try and meditate. That's a complaining person, right? And a meditator looks at it and says, oh, that was interesting, you know, that I, I, I fell asleep. You know, that was interesting. What's, what's going on with that, you know? And so you're paying, so now that becomes something that you, you know falling asleep is not meditating. Okay? So your intention is to be a meditation practitioner, and when falling asleep starts to come up, you take a deep breath and you get present. You increase your intention. You increase the intention, right? Because this is what we're working with all the time, is staying present and remaining relaxed in the face of the challenges that occur in our lives. Well, it, up until a certain point, it may be a doing because it, it, there, there is a, a thing about efforting. And uh, Justin Stone, the, the originator of Tai Chi Cha, he called it the effort of no effort. He called it the effort of no effort. And what it is is that you, in, in a prior to being familiar with the zone, or prior to being familiar with flowing, right? Or prior, uh, prior to being familiar with aligning yourself with the ener energy in such a way that you can move with it, you can move with it, right? Prior to that, effort means to hunker down, right? Effort means to, uh, to contract and, and to push, right? But, People who have experience with this say that at some point, at some point they discover the ability to let go and let the energy, you know, identify with the energy, become one with the energy. So you're moving with the energy and that's when the effort is no longer necessary. But you, in order to get there, you might have to jumpstart the process and that means making an effort. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so when you practice meditation, in the very beginning of practicing meditation, you probably have to make an effort, you know, to remember to do all, you know, to do it right and to sit in the right posture and everything. But after you practice for a while, right, after you practice for a while, you can, you can find, you can discover, you can notice the flow of energy that you can let go, you can let go to and flow with. Yeah, and when you notice that and you let go and you flow with it, that's power. 
there's no effort necessary anymore, you know? This is what, this is, what is practiced in martial arts, for example, right? In karate, and aikido, and judo, right? They're practicing learning how to move with the energy that's moving already, right? And if you learn how to move with the energy that's moving already, you have a lot more power. You can use physics. You can use the weight shift and all these other things that are used in the martial arts that, that allows them to be uh, a lot more powerful in terms of the, the movements that they're making. So these are all different facets of it, you know, that we keep. That's why it's important to keep listening and keep talking and keep practicing to get these, all these dimensions uh, to start to, to work together. Right. In the natural state, all of your centers of energy in the body, the heart center, the, the belly, the head, right? George Gurdjieff, a famous teacher, talked about uh, the fact that these centers are operating separately, right? And so part of these practices is to integrate the energy so that the, the centers start to operate together. The belly and the head, right, start to operate together and the hearts to operate together start to operate together. That's the natural state. When everything is, um, is, is flowing naturally and integrated in a way that the relationship between the energy that you are and the energy in the world is a dance. It's a dance. Yeah, and that's when you experience this sense of uh, being at home in, in your life, when your energy and the energy of life are dancing together. Okay. Okay. Have a good day.